which is not in this book, Nat. Okay, I got off track. Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are going to be doing my August wrap up. All right, before I get to anything bookish, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as tell me in the comments, how many books did you DNF this month? All right, like I said in my September TBR, I don't know why, but it felt like August lasted for so long. I'm not really sure, probably because of the heat, seeing as how we're still breaking triple digits and you know, September has started. And speaking of September, as you can tell, I've gotten a little spookier, got some mood lighting on my shelves. Um, can you tell I'm very ready for spooky season? I also have my new little baddie earrings, which I'm in love with and um, I'm gonna be wearing quite often this fall. But anyway, since it felt like August took forever, I also feel like I had a very, very fantastic reading month. I got so many books read. I actually almost needed a second page for my wrap up in my reading journal. So on that note, let's jump into my stats for the month. Starting out, I read 14 books this month and across those I read 4,705 pages. That's wow, pretty impressive. That does include converting audiobook hours to pages, but in regard to audiobook hours, I listened to roughly 45 hours. My average rating was 4.12 stars, which is fantastic and I love seeing that. Unfortunately, I did have two DNFs, one of which was on my physical shelves and I'm not super happy about that. As for my genre breakdown, I once again was pretty across the board and I read two fantasy books this month, two horror and three manga, one mystery, two romance, and four sci-fi. I'm particularly jazzed about the sci-fi one because I think I might be a sci-fi girly. The more I read of it, the more I'm enjoying. So, you know, drop me some recommendations in the comments. I need to read more of it apparently because it's going fairly well so far. As for the little goals I keep for myself, unfortunately, I did not read a nonfiction book this month. I did, however, read a book which was 450 pages or more, and I also read a comic slash manga. I'm gonna let manga count for that as well. For series stats, I unfortunately started into two new series, but I did continue five, and I finished one. Alrighty, this month I'm gonna be a little boring and we're just gonna go in the order that I read these books. So starting at the top, I read Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson, which is the fifth book in the Stevie Bell Mysteries series. Originally it was the Truly Devious series, however now it's kind of just become the Stevie Bell series. In this one, it is Stevie's senior year. However, her boyfriend David is studying abroad in London and he kind of works out a way for her and her friends to come join him. And of course, while she is there in in London, she ends up getting roped into some cold case. Of course, because it's Stevie, she has to solve it. The cold case is set in the 1990s in which this group of nine friends who were all part of a comedy trio went to stay at one of their family's properties or something, and two of them were killed by a axe murderer. Unfortunately, this was a letdown. I really enjoyed the rest of this series so far, but this was just such a disappointment by comparison. For most of this series, the characters have been my favorite part. I've really enjoyed all of them. I love the dynamics between them. Uh, there was just way too much drama going on between all of them. And a lot of those dramas felt like Johnson was sort of trying to reach for something to cause conflict to compete with the mystery element of the story. But it's a mystery book. Like I want to be reading about the mystery. I don't, I don't really care about all this petty teenager stuff. And on top of that, for the first time in this series, I felt like the mystery was actually kind of predictable. Prior to this book, I always felt that Stevie's anxiety was very genuine and well incorporated into her character. But this time around, I just felt like it was a bit too much. It seemed as though her anxiety was the reasoning behind why she was jealous of David's friend he's made in the UK. But I was having to do some real mental gymnastics to follow her logic. <laughs> and that whole situation just had me rolling my eyes. Constantly. At one point I was a little concerned I might have pulled the muscle. The past timeline in Johnson's stories usually always drags me in and thankfully that did work well in this one too. The setting was well established in both perspectives, which did keep me engaged in reading even though I was getting tired of the petty teenage elements. However, we spent a lot of the beginning in this book setting up the events for how they got to London, which really made it seem like the mystery was taking a back seat. And then it took forever to return to it, only for there to be an unsatisfying ending. Personally, I felt the reasoning was pretty thin and I guessed two major elements of the mystery, which made it feel a bit anticlimactic. 
Oh God, and like, don't even get me started on the stupid cliffhanger at the end of this book. It, I'm so annoyed with where the series has gone. I, I don't know if I'm gonna continue it off of this one. I actually am kind of debating unhauling this rather than adding it to my shelves. Uh, my cop pile came out to three stars, which is really sad because I think I've given every book prior to this 4.5 to five stars. I'm upset. Thankfully though, uh, another series which I continued went way better for me. I continued Soul Eater by Atsushi Okubo with volume four, very basic synopsis is in this world, there are people who are both Meisters and weapons. The Meisters wield the weapons. And we're following three teams who go to a school in which they are training to eventually create a death scythe, which can be used by the Shinigami Lord Death. In this one, I am so excited that we are finally diving into the real meat of the plot that is building up. Although you follow three different teams, I would arguably say the main characters of the story are Maka and Soul, who are my favorite. And in the previous volume, they were starting to have some issues in their relationship, which unfortunately then impacts their ability to fight together as my strong weapon. And I really love seeing them trying to work through that in this one because it just makes me root for their relationship all the more. Also in this one, we see Death the Kid starting to investigate into the main plot as well. And I just have so much fun following him because he is both so incredibly powerful while also being so ridiculous and constantly gets in his own way because he is obsessed with symmetry. It's a thing, but it's so funny how it's utilized. Unfortunately, there was some more fan service in this one, which I'm not a big fan of when it comes to manga across the board, but um, still all over this, very excited to continue. This came out to 4.5 stars. Another series which I continued was Murderbot. And this is the one where I have to say, I, I might be a sci-fi girly because this is working really well. I had no interest to pick up the series originally, but I did so because it completed a challenge for my library. And now I'm just like having so much fun. So I was on to Artificial Condition and I can't really tell you anything about these as I go. Basically, we are following Murderbot, who is a artificial intelligence being that is somewhat humanoid, basically created to be a killer. They are probably one of my new favorite characters of the year. They're just so relatable, so funny. They come across so incredibly human while at the same time doing their best to not be human. And I just love seeing that about them. I love the conversations that go on in this series about what it means to be human, the relationships we've seen so far. I, I have so much fun every time I read these. I think Martha Wells has created a really well done world. And now I'm getting further and further into the main plot. I'm, I'm so intrigued to see where things are gonna go. So much closer to a big time climax, which is not in this book, Nat. Okay, I got off track. Anyway, I read Artificial Condition to start out. The plot itself in this one did take a little bit longer to get into. There was more setup time, but I was still loving Murderbot. And then in this one, they actually make friends with another sentient AI called Art, which if I remember correctly, was the AI system in a ship. So that was different. In this one, I really thought Wells just brought this universe she's created to life. And I was getting so much more intrigued by the plot, which was starting to be unraveled. Yeah, this one came out to four stars. As for a series which I started, uh, I ended up picking up Spy Family Volume 1 by Tetsuya Endo, which I, I only did because I didn't own the next volume of Soul Eater, but I wanted to work in a manga. I've been wanting to get to this ever since Josh and I binged the entire anime and I fell in love with the character with the family. It's so silly, it's so fun. It has those addictive spy thriller elements at points, but really for the most part, it's just a wholesome family comedy. If you somehow have not heard about this series, basically we are following our main character Twilight, who is a spy, and in order to try and get closer to his target, he has to create a fake family. So he adopts a little girl, Anya, who he does not realize is actually a telepath. And then eventually he enlists the help of Yor, who is a assassin, to be his wife. Anya is the only one who knows the truth about the entire family, and Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. It's so cute. I think watching the anime definitely helped my enjoyment of the manga because I can hear the characters saying these things in my head. It's as though I can pull the tone from the anime and apply it to the manga, which I think helps set the tone for the entire story in the manga so much better. Like I said, it's very silly. Uh, it does have some more serious moments, but I just have so much fun. Twilight 
he doesn't deal with children and especially in the beginning he doesn't really know how to handle Anya because he doesn't spend any time with kids but she is so desperate to ensure that their relationship works because she was an orphan and so she wants to stay with him I love the family feels ridiculous absolutely adorable though uh, five stars honestly I wouldn't be surprised if I give every single one in this series five stars <laughs> rounding our way Back to Murderbot, I then picked up Rogue Protocol. This one furthered the main plot a lot more, I felt, but I also just really adored the exploration of Murderbot's character in this one and the complicated relationship they have with humans and relationships themselves. Unfortunately, I do think an issue returned in this one that I had with the first of the series, which was there were too many side characters who weren't distinct enough to keep everybody straight. But I was excited because there were some references to the fact that we were going to start rounding back to characters from earlier on in the series. It would be easier for me to keep track of all of them rather than having like a whole new set of characters every single book. Once again, this one also came out to four stars. Quick, easy time. I, like I said, I'm just having so much fun with this series. For my weekly reading vlog, I read The Holiday Trap by Rome Parrish. This was the book picked for me by my friend Catherine. This is basically a queer version of that movie, The Holiday. We're following two characters who both end up going through something awkward in their everyday life and decide to try and take a month off from their normal life. So they switch places. Greta from Maine ends up going to New Orleans and Truman from New Orleans ends up going to Maine. Of course, each of them then have their own romance that happens. And I did enjoy this as a romance book goes. I think the author kind of shot themselves in the foot by having the two separate romances going because unfortunately I far preferred Truman's romance. I just felt like there was more chemistry between those two characters. It was a little bit slow burn. We, we saw more of them becoming friends before they really showcased romantic interest on the other person. Whereas in Greta's storyline, it's pretty obvious from the get-go that she and her love interest are attracted to one another and they end up sleeping together pretty quickly. So theirs felt a lot more insta -lusty. At the same time, I also felt like the focus in Greta's storyline was much more on tr trying to break away from her family who were weirdly codependent on each other and finding happiness on her own and in this new place, a new passion for herself, a new family that she chose to have. I liked all of those things, but it just made it seem like there was way too much going on in Greta's storyline. Truman also had some other stuff apart from his romance, but none of those ever seemed to overshadow the romance. They more added to it, if anything. And that, that that's kind of my biggest issue here is honestly, if this was purely focused on Truman, I think this could have been like a 4.5, but unfortunately because it had the split down the middle, it was more of a 3.5 star book. I liked it. It was very cute. There were some really great moments. I did have some taps in here, but as far as a romance book goes, this isn't a new favorite, unfortunately. <laughs> Next up, I picked up Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Torres, and this was because I did a color wheel prompt for my Broke Bitches Bingo board. I think that's right. I got purple, and this was like the only purple book on my shelves. Obviously, I grabbed this from Book of the Month, and the reason I did so was because of the blurb. In this spellbinding debut novel, two estranged half-sisters tasked with guarding their family's library of magical books must work together to unravel a deadly secret at the heart of their collection. My biggest issue is there was just way too much exposition happening in this book. And I like exposition, okay? I enjoy boring books. The idea of the magic that comes from books is so interesting, pretty original. It went absolutely nowhere. I was 40% into this when I finally decided to put it down. And thus far, we had been introduced to three separate perspectives, all of which have a absurd amount of time dedicated to the exposition of magic, the world of this magic, and each of these characters' histories. Yet I somehow still did not care about any of these characters. I was having a hard time putting together really how the magic system worked in a practical sense. The pacing was insanely slow. It just, it seemed like any time something interesting would finally start to take place, the chapter would end and we'd hop to another person's perspective. So then you have to read two more chapters before you can get back to the actual events which are interesting you. Like I said, I didn't feel like I understood any of these characters. All of them felt so flat with very, very little personality. By the point I had DNF'd, I actually realized that it seemed as though none of them 
were active players in the story taking place. They were just watching things unfold. <laughs> it did seem as though we were finally actually starting to dive into a little bit of the plot, except I could already sort of see exactly where this was gonna go. And I ended up conferring with a friend who had also attempted to read this. <laughs> they didn't like it either. I decided to put it down. I checked out spoiler reviews and yeah, I was right about the plot in pretty much every regard. I'm kind of glad that I didn't end up pushing through this, but I'm, I'm still sad about it because this is a pretty cover. It was an interesting idea, not for me. Then I continued into Spy Family with volume two. Um, absolutely adore. <laughs> also, this has one of my favorite bits, Lloyd playing pretend with Anya. Uh, it's a lot shorter in the manga versus it has a whole episode in the anime. It's probably my favorite episode of the anime, but it's still so cute even in here, even in a shortened version, it's, it's just so precious. I love seeing Lloyd. Oh, uh, Lloyd is Twilight's undercover name. I love seeing him struggling with his role as a father because on one hand, he realizes, you know, this is just a job. He's not actually her father. But on the other hand, he wants to do a good job at it. He wants to raise Anya properly. He, he wants to be there for her and ensure, you know, she has a good life. And he actually is making such a positive impact on Anya, which just makes my heart swell. It's, it's so freaking cute. This one also has one of my all time favorite facial expressions from Anya. Every time I see it, it makes me crack up. I literally just bought a t-shirt with this facial expression on it. I wish I thought to wear it, but I, I didn't consider it. This one, this is, this is my favorite. It just, it kills me. Anytime she makes that facial expression, it, it cracks me up. So yeah, this was also five stars. <laughs> I'm just gonna squeal about this series. Anytime I read it, hope you're ready for that. Next, I ended up reading Silver Nitrate by uh, Sylvia Moreno Garcia, which I was really excited about, mostly because it was another horror book from SMG. And I really enjoyed Mexican Gothic. I really liked so much of her other works. So I, I wanted to see the return of her really creepy, unsettling, eerie, immersive writing style. And I got that here. It made me so happy to see it again. This is following two childhood best friends who end up befriending a older man that turns out to have been a horror director that later on in his life became involved with a Nazi occultist. And they believed that there was magic in the creation of movies. That was such an original and weird setup that of course, as soon as I heard it, I was like, sign me the hell up. Personally, I really adored all of the backstage knowledge that was talked about when it came to the movie world. The references to stars and films of the past. I thought that it was very cool to see our female main character Montserrat working as a audio engineer. On the opposite side, we also have our male main character Tristan, who was a actor, but after a tragic accident, he has kind of fallen from the limelight and is really struggling to make ends meet now. I gotta say, Unsurprisingly, I thought the character work in the story was phenomenal. Although I did not always love the main characters, I thought they were both so fully fleshed, well-created personalities that jumped off the page. And there was this, this super interesting dynamic between the two of them because they were weirdly dependent on each other, but also they also struggled with their relationship so much. There's actually a bit of a slow burn childhood enemies to lovers relationship going on in this as well, which I'll be honest, I was not the biggest fan of, but I still loved seeing every single interaction between these two main characters. Montserrat was a very strong woman. She grew up tough and was so used to being alone, but she also has such a big heart. Tristan is pretty vain and cowardly by comparison, but he is also haunted by his past mistakes and is trying to slowly heal from those. They both know each other so well, sometimes too well to the point where they can really make certain jabs hurt. Fiery dynamic between them was also sort of the appeal in watching their relationship. They're both bisexual hot messes also. Like I mentioned, their relationship isn't always healthy, but they both always return to one another. I gotta say, this was slow moving, but I was enthralled most of the way through. Oftentimes I was on the edge of my seat. I was so intrigued to see what was gonna happen next because more often than not, I had no idea where this was gonna go. You pick this up and you aren't immediately engaged, 
chances are you're not gonna enjoy this. I also personally could have done with a bit more horror elements. There were some scenes that were very unsettling and some that were a bit grotesque, but I wanted more in that department specifically. There was a lot of time building up to the climax, but I think if there had been more horrific scenes sprinkled throughout, this would that would have really amped up the sense of dread as well as the pacing. But across the board though, I still enjoyed this. I'm not surprised. I continue to really enjoy SMG's work. She's just an author that I will constantly pick up. This turned out to be four stars and I'm very glad I managed to squeeze it in this month. And then lastly, we are making our way all the way back to Murderbot again with Exit Strategy. Like I said, I just adore seeing Murderbot dealing with these fickle things called emotions that they don't want to have to worry about, but somehow keep plaguing them. As I said, for Rogue Protocol, I was glad that we saw the return of some characters from prior. That way I knew right out of the get-go who they were, I knew what to expect from them, I knew the dynamics, and I didn't have to worry about meeting new people. It also meant that I was more settled into the story a lot quicker, which was great because the plot in this one is a lot more fast-paced. It took off early, it kept me engaged the entire time, and um, the plot thickens. I am intrigued to see where things go next. I think I'm getting nearer to the full-length novel in this series, and I'm really interested to see how Wells's writing style does there, because these are great in a novella format, but I'm, I'm intrigued to see how it works when there's an additional 150 pages. This one also was a four star. Seems as though probably majority of the series will be four stars, because they're not favorites, but I've just been having a great time reading them. Apparently, I'm a bigger sci-fi fan than I thought, so please give me recommendations. <laughs> All right, and on that note, that is it for today, y'all. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I have all my socials as well as a few ways you can support me linked in the description. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you, bye.